Today we're going to take a look at visualizing and analyzing CT data in LumaField's Voyager software. X-ray CT is a powerful tool for engineers, product designers, and manufacturing engineers to understand the products that they're building, as well as the manufacturing processes that produce them. Today, we're going to use LumaField's Voyager software to both visualize and analyze CT data. First, let's take a look at the overall layout of Voyager. On the left, we have our data panel, which organizes all of the data in the project. Below that, we have our bookmarks, which are snapshots of state in the project. We'll return to those later in this video. Up top, we have our uh, button that takes us back to the project dashboard. We have our scan title, and then we have the toolbar. The toolbar is where you can find all of the powerful visualization and analysis features in Voyager. On the far right, we have our settings for the project, uh, as well as our share button, uh, which lets you share the project with uh, colleagues. On the far right, we've got our attributes panel, which adjusts based on what you have selected from the data panel. Here we have a volume, a aligned ROI or region of interest. Uh, and so we have all of our volumetric visualization tools and metadata displayed. Over the viewport, we have our data selector, which lets us select different pieces of data to visualize in the main viewport. To the right of our data selector, we have our slice selector, which allows you to select different cross sections of the object. Now that we know the basic layout of Voyager, let's take a closer look at the attributes panel. The attributes panel contains both navigation tools as well as visualization tools. So at the top of the attributes panel, we have the crop tools, which when enabled, allow us to slice through the data and exclude volumes from being visualized. So this can be really useful to exclude, uh, say, support structures, um, other parts of assembly that are getting in the way of perceiving some internal structure. So this is really useful with, with CT data to be able to uh, kind of carve away at the outside of, uh, of a scan. So let me turn the crop off again, and I'm going to instead turn on our slice planes. So this visualizes where our, what we call our cardinal slice planes, or XYZ slice planes are in this oriented volume. So I'm gonna to switch to split screen mode, so we can actually see where we are in this 3D view on the right, and as I move this slider here on the bottom, you can see the slider on the right moving, the X slider on the right moving, and you can also see that red slice plane on the left moving. We use color coding of the slice planes to make it easier to navigate these 3D volumes. X is color coded red, Y is color coded green, and Z is color coded blue. The way I like to remember this is XYZ RGB. This is a common convention in CAD tools. Next, let's talk about the range mapper. In order to understand the range mapper, we need to revisit what X-ray CT values actually correspond to. In a reconstruction, the brighter values correspond to denser materials, things like metals, for example, and the darker values correspond to less dense materials, things like plastics. So if we look at this uh, AirPod reconstruction, we can see that the battery, magnets, uh, some of the audio driver are dense materials because they show up as very bright, and then the uh, plastic enclosure shows up as this less dense, uh, darker gray. To make it easier to see the subtle differences between materials, the range mapper lets us map those gray values to different colors. In addition to letting us map different colors to those raw attenuation values, the range mapper gives us powerful tools for untangling different materials in a scan. As you can see at the top of the range mapper, we have a plot uh, with these different spikes. Those different spikes correspond to different materials in the reconstruction. The interesting thing about CT, unlike lots of other 3D scanning technologies, is it can actually see air. So the leftmost peak in the range mapper corresponds typically to air. So generally when I open up a new scan, I move this leftmost handle a little bit to the right so it's just to the right of that handle. Uh, and you can see that we've eliminated the air and now we're just actually seeing those lower attenuation values uh, those uh, softer or those less dense uh, polymers and that little silicone, uh, silicone ear tip here. So if I keep moving this left range mapper handle to the right, I'm going to steadily remove more and more of those lower attenuation materials. So you can see that there's another little bump here corresponding to those polymer uh, components. And now 
we've removed those and so we've essentially uh, unpackaged uh, the AirPod. So we can see all of this really fantastic detail inside the structure now that we've taken away that plastic enclosure. You can see we've got another bump here. I'm going to go ahead and bring back our 2D slice so we can see better see inside the, uh, the AirPod. As I move this further to the right, you can see the inside of that battery disappear. So the materials uh, that can be found inside the battery in the AirPod uh, correspond to this bump here in the, in the range mapper. As so I move this uh, leftmost handle further to the right, you can see more of those lower density materials uh, disappearing until all we're left with are the um, densest materials. So you can see um, you know, the ball grid array, the solder joints from all of the uh, electronic components, um, some of the denser, you know, the bigger magnets uh, in, the, uh, in the AirPod, as well as the stainless steel uh, contact tips, uh, antenna, the sequestral element, uh, and it looks like possibly the solder seals on the uh, MEMS microphones in this, uh, in this assembly. So you can see as I scrub through the uh, AirPod here, uh, it's actually a little bit hard to see some of these structures. I mentioned that there's this battery here because I happen to know that that's a battery, um, but it's safe to say there, you know, there really aren't a whole lot of right angles uh, in, this, in this AirPod. So it's a little confusing to see uh, what's actually happening and how this uh, product is actually put together. Uh, fortunately, we have a tool called Custom Slice Planes that lets you take a slice and orient it in three dimensions um, relative to features that might not necessarily line up with those, uh, those three XYZ slice planes that we made. So let's take a look at the custom slice plane feature. So you can see here on the left, we have a preview of where the slice plane is in space. And on the right, we actually have a visualization of what that slice plane uh, can see when we move it around. So the first thing I like to do is turn on my translation handles and drag the slice plane um, close to the feature that I want to see. So in this case, I want to take a look at the battery, which is this uh, yellow cylinder here. And so I'm just going to move my slice plane over until I'm uh, definitely intersecting that battery. So you can see here on the right, I'm starting to see the layers of that battery. It's a wound cell. Um, so I'm seeing the, some of the kind of tree grain of the layers of the uh, battery here. So next what I'm going to do is turn on my rotation handles. Uh, so this is going to let me begin to rotate my slice plane. The yellow rotation handle uh, will always rotate this slice plane perpendicular to the viewport. So this is really uh, helpful to orient yourself um, using the uh, viewport. And the red green and blue handles rotate relative to the slice planes x y and z coordinates respectively so you can see that we have the battery uh, in frame here so i'm going to go ahead and orient myself perpendicular to the battery and just use that yellow handle to rotate you can start to see that battery coming into frame here on the right uh, i'm going to go ahead and toggle over to my ROI and just adjust my visualization settings a little bit so I can better see the battery. So I'm removing some of that plastic around the outside. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And so now I'm going to just rotate a little bit more. So I'm squared up against that battery and then I'm going to come in from the top and rotate a little bit more to make sure that we're nice and aligned. So now, when I run my slice plane, we can see that those battery layers are staying in the same place. But you can also see that I'm not actually getting the entire battery. I'm bottoming out the slice plane here at zero. So I'm going to turn my translation handles back on. And I'm just going to move that slice plane back to the beginning of the battery. And you can see that there's a little bit of a transition here where I've got the case of the battery on one side and the battery layers on the other side. So that means that I'm not fully aligned yet. So I'm just going to rotate a little bit, coming in at this uh, from a couple of angles to make sure that we're nice and aligned. So that's evening out a little bit. I'm just going to move this forward, and just coming at this from the other angle. And now you can see we've got a nice clean alignment uh, to that battery. So if we were a, inspecting this battery for any uh, defects or making sure that the uh, internal tabs are in the right place, 
we now have a nice aligned slice plane that lets us see inside that battery in a way that makes sense relative to its construction. So I'm just gonna submit that slice plane. And now the slice plane is available in my slice selector drop down here. Uh, so I can toggle between my X, Y, Z and my A and B custom slice planes and just cycle through these uh, and inspect everything that is uh, along that slice plane axis. I can use the bookmark tool to create a snapshot um, of the exact visual state of Voyager. So I can come back and recreate and capture that exact moment uh, where I found something interesting uh, and share that. So check out this battery. Bookmarks are especially useful for summarizing learnings and insights, and because Voyager is browser-based, it makes it very easy to share your learnings with colleagues and collaborators. Often, it's useful to generate a mesh from reconstruction data for reverse engineering, uh, for digital manufacturing workflows, or for simulation. This is easy to do in Voyager. Simply select your reconstruction, or ROI, and select surface. This brings us into our segmentation workflow in which we pick a threshold that lets us segment the part from the background. So I'm going to pick two slices here and move through and try to make sure that the blue of our threshold selection follows the structure of the part uh, without letting any uh, uh, background in or flooding uh, over the background. So a threshold that's too high, you can see that we're not actually capturing the structure of the part. And if our threshold is too low, you can see that we're starting to bleed uh, outside of the structure of the part here. So I'm just going to move this up until we're about 0.42. This looks like a good threshold. So we can see that it's clearly preserving the edge of the uh, part as we move through. I'm going to scrub through this other slice. That looks clean. And then I'll just do one final pass in 3D to make sure that we're getting a nice, clean surface. So now I'll click Export Mesh. This sends a mesh generation task to the cloud. And once that mesh is ready, uh, Voyager will notify you that it's available for download. Today we covered the basics of visualization and analysis of CT data in Voyager. There are many other advanced workflows and capabilities in the software. For additional tutorials and workflows, please visit our support page.